Music you can see where I went around with the incredible Sean McNabb, bass player extraordinaire, played with everybody. I think right now you're in Lynch Mob, right? I am. I'm playing with George Lynch uh, going into my sixth year, and uh, we're going to tear it up again this year. And then you're in, a, in a, another band. Rough Riot. Right. Uh, which is three of us from Quiet Riot. It's Carlos Cabazzo, Paul Shortino, myself, and then uh, Chris Hager and Dave Alford from Rough Cut. So we kind of merged both bands. Oh, so we that's where you get the name. Quiet Riot and Rough Cut. Rough Riot. So uh, tell us about your career, because you have an illustrious career. You're not originally from California. No, I'm a Midwestern guy. I was uh, born in Indiana. I grew up there. Um, I spent my days in Florida in the club scene in the Midwest, you know, doing all that. And then uh, at 21, I came out to L.A. Uh, via New York City and got the gig in Quiet Riot two and a half weeks later. I was so lucky. You know, and uh, that was the beginning of my national career. I met Frankie Benelli at the Cat House. Somebody had introduced us, and he goes, why don't you come over and, and record something with us tomorrow? And I was thrilled to do so, and um, I went over and cut two tracks for them. And uh, they go, how'd you like to be the bass player in Quiet Riot? And uh, I, me I remember driving over Laurel Canyon, 21-year-old kid screaming out the window, you know, that I, that I did it, and that I... Ricky Made Rackman, it. here I come. Oh man, Ricky's awesome. I yeah. love Ricky, and he's always been so good to us, you know. Wow. Yeah. And it all happened because of his club, right? The sure did. And Tammy, don't forget about Tammy Downs. That was their spot, you know. And some crazy fun stuff went on there back in the day, in general. And and you have such great causes uh, that are close to near dear to your heart. Yeah, saving canine lives. It's a fantastic charity. We're doing that with Bobby and Jasmine Kimball. Bobby Kimball from Toto, yes. Frankie Benelli, Rudy Sarzo, Ellis Hall. We got all these great people involved. Ellis Hall's great. Yeah, man. We're gonna we got a horn section that night. We're gonna do some Tower of Power and some average white band stuff. It's gonna be so much fun. Love rock and roll, but I also love that too. You know, as a bass player, that's always fun. The the main focus is is uh, saving these these little doggies and stuff, saving and, canine lives. And what brings you to NAMM? Since 19 uh, probably 87, I've been coming wow. here. Wow. You know, it's you probably each year you walk around a little bit less, you know. But <laughs> but uh, I've had the same companies uh, for many many years, you know, and. I'm so blessed to have Ampeg and Dean Markley Strings and, and our Ernie Ball Music Man in my corner and EMG pickups. So, you know, I've been using the same stuff for, for all these years and my, my theory is if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Don't fix it you know? right. I don't know if you knew this, but I'm also an actor. And, Absolutely, uh, that, yeah, talk about it. That's been taking a lot of my time um, too. You know, I'm trying to get the balance between the acting and the music. I've got two Lifetime movies um, I've been working in the New Mexico TV and film market, which is kind of exploding down there. Uh, Netflix just bought the Albuquerque Studios. There's a lot of talent down there. Uh, a lot of it's still cast through LA, but you know, it's it's getting it's really starting to go off down there. And I've been blessed to be a part of two uh, Lifetime Network movies. So, so the two movies that are in Lifetime are yeah, Cheerleader Nightmare, which I play this football coach. Uh, you barely recognize me, but it's a great part. And then I've got another one uh, getting ready to come out next month called Dying for a Baby, where I play this sleazy gigolo. And uh, that was so much fun. <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, this is something that I've kind of, I was a childhood actor, and then music took over, so I got away from that, you know. And then about 15 years ago, I wanted to get back into it. And I started studying again and, and started auditioning and stuff. So, uh if I make it, I'll be an overnight success that took 15, 20 years in the making. <laughs> well, multi-talented, and you had to pick one over the other at this point, but now you can do both. So. Yeah, I, I'd never want to do that. I, I think uh, there's no reason why you can't do whatever you want. You know, it's how hard are you willing to work is right. my theory, right. you know? Cool. How bad do you want it? Cool. Well, it's yeah. been an honor. Thank you. Sean McNabb. Thank you so much, guys. you can see, Winter Nam. Thanks, Sean. All right, thanks, guys.